The title for today is a Connecticut for All, uh, Strengthening Gender Equity uh, and Building a State for All of Our Residents so that everyone feels uh, welcome and protected here and that no one feels as uh, uh, an alien or an outsider. The Time's Up Act, which we introduced last year, which a version of it passed the Senate in a bipartisan manner uh, last year and unfortunately was not taken up by the House of Representatives, is a top priority for our caucus again this year. It's critical that Connecticut step up and actually give access to justice for victims of sexual assault in a manner that's more fair and equitable. Far too many victims in the state of Connecticut are not getting justice in our system because we have a statute of limitations that is one of the shortest in the country of just five years. Victims of people like Larry Nasser and Bill Cosby, if those crimes happened here in Connecticut, they would not be able to get justice in our state. It's time that this legislature stand with women, stand with all victims of sexual assault who are not just women, and make sure that everyone has access to justice and we recognize why these crimes are different, why these crimes are often harder for victims to come forward, that the trauma that a victim of sexual assault endures is a different kind of trauma than victims of other crimes. It's critical that we change our laws and allow all victims in the state of Connecticut to have access to justice just like they do in more than 20 other states. As a female, a small business owner, someone who's worked in corporate America for many years, and perhaps most importantly, the mother of two daughters, who I want to see treated fairly. The proposals we're discussing here today are crucial. That's why I'm proud to be standing here today to uh, discuss Senate Bill 765, an act concerning equal pay. We recognize that the gender gap is wide and wider still for women of color. Figures from studies published early last year indicated that women make 79 cents for every dollar a man earns, a 21 cent discrepancy. I stand here today with a dedicated caucus committed to ensuring that equal pay is not a new phenomenon, but rather an exception. Good afternoon, I'm Senator Mary Darty Abrams representing the 13th District and I'm here today to speak to you about Senate Bill 395, an act prohibiting deceptive advertising practices by limited service pregnancy centers. The women of Connecticut are entitled to authentic, comprehensive medical care in all areas, including reproductive health. The women of Connecticut are entitled to honesty regarding medical services, particularly when it comes to timely care, like that needed when faced with an unplanned pregnancy. For instance, if your center does not offer comprehensive reproductive health care services, including abortions, or if your center does not offer comprehensive um, care such as emergency contraceptives, or if your center does not have medical staff on site, we simply ask that you make that clear. Seems simple. Yet despite public outcry, municipalities' objections, and media attention, these deceptive practices continue. In Connecticut, there are 25 such crisis pregnancy centers, including a mobile van that travels around the state under the guise of being a comprehensive reproductive health care provider. Would we allow this in any other area of health care? As the Senate Chair of Public Health, I believe that being deceived, delayed, or blocked in finding the health care you seek is a threat on public health. Therefore, it's time for legislation to put an end to the false, misleading, and deceptive advertising practices of the limited service pregnancy centers. Uh, since Roe v. Wade was decided in 1973, there has been a fierce and desperate national movement uh, to reverse it, even though, according to a Wall Street Journal poll, a record 71% of Americans oppose overturning the landmark case. Uh, now conservatives hold a 5-4 to four majority on the Supreme Court, and there are currently over a dozen circuit court cases teed up to overturn uh, Roe. Um, over the last a uh, few months we've seen efforts. We saw a Texas uh, judge strike down the entire Affordable Care Act. Just last night, a very closely divided Supreme Court overturned an onerous Louisiana law uh, that, struck, that sought to uh, restrict a woman's right to choose. So this bill would establish the Council on Protecting Women's Health. The Council will be tasked specifically with monitoring federal legislation, proposed administrative rules, and the progress of litigation relating to women's health and wellness to ensure that the action of the federal government will not be thwarting women's health care here in Connecticut. 
With women's health care under fire on the federal level, this council can review a legal threat and report to the General Assembly as to what actions we need to take so we can respond quickly and effectively to preserve quality health care for women here in Connecticut. The council will be bipartisan and will be uh, composed, among others, of representatives from women's groups and the medical and legal communities. We want to make sure that Connecticut stays a leader in, health, in women's health care, and we've learned that we can't depend on Washington, D.C. or the Trump administration to help us. If anything, we need to be prepared to counter the destructive and harmful actions of this administration, and this council will serve as a critical watchdog for women's health care at a time when it is so desperately needed. I'm really honored to speak with you today about SB 533, an act concerning access to diaper changing tables. What this bill would do is improve act the health and safety of children by requiring all new and substantively renovated buildings that have public restrooms to provide at least one diaper changing table to women and importantly also to men on each building floor that is accessible to the public. The reason behind this bill is the fact that parenting finally is in the 21st century becoming more equitable. Mothers and fathers are starting, starting to share responsibilities in a more fair manner. This bill sends a message to young families who are deciding where to start, where to buy their home, where to send their kids to school. That Connecticut is a wonderful place to raise your children. It's a healthy and safe and equitable place to raise your children.